Necrosing mesenteritis is a rare idiopathic non-neoplastic condition characterized by chronic fat necrosis, inflammation, and fibrosis most commonly affecting the small bowel mesentery. While many patients are asymptomatic, clinical features and complications are related to the mass effect resulting from this inflammation and fibrosis. Indeed, severe cases of SM can be complicated by bowel obstruction as well as mesenteric vessel thrombosis or ischemia. Hi, my name is Vivek Saha, and I'm an internal medicine resident physician at Mayo Clinic Rochester. On behalf of my colleagues and my mentor, Dr. Iris Wang, I'm delighted to talk about a recent paper titled Sclerosing Mesenteritis, a concise clinical review for clinicians, which will be available in Mayo Clinic proceedings in May of 2024. While the preferred modality for diagnosis is abdominal CT, the workup becomes quite nuanced as malignant involvement of the mesentery can have similar characteristics on imaging. Additionally, given the rarity of this disease, there are currently no standardized guideline directed diagnostic or management recommendations. Given this lack of current guidelines for this condition, we have synthesized a comprehensive but concise review alongside a suggested practical approach to SM for busy clinicians based on the current data that is available. Historically, SM was described using various different names uh, and were thought to be that were thought to be different ET, uh, conditions altogether. This included mesenteric lipodystrophy, mesenteric conjunctivitis, retractal mesenteritis. However, these conditions are not now thought to be actually the same condition termed sclerosing mesenteritis. The prevalence of SM is between 0.2 to roughly 3.2% and we do anticipate the prevalence increasing as imaging becomes more effective and frequent. And while the etiology of SM remains unknown or not elucidated, there are some associations that have been identified. This includes a history of abdominal surgery, concurrent intra-abdominal pathology or malignancy, as well as autoimmune conditions, where the former, so abdominal surgery, is the most uh, prevalent risk factor that has been associated with SM. Importantly, in the literature, there has been much debate on malignancy as a risk factor for SM or SM being a perineoplastic uh, condition. However, a lot of these uh, studies that suggest this association between malignancy and SM uh, are based on case series or retrospective studies. Conversely, a systematic review and meta-analysis uh, of case control studies showed that the po pooled odds ratio for malignancy in patients with SM as compared to the control cohort did not differ significantly. With respect to diagnostic workup, SM was historically diagnosed based on CT, just like it is done now, but before they required a confirmatory histopathology via biopsy. But now this practice has shifted away uh, from the biopsies give, to limit essentially any invasive unnecessary biopsies. Unless of course there's a strong clinical suspicion of malignancy uh, that it, is thought to be affecting the mesentery. A major limitation of CT right now is that it can have some difficulty distinguishing between SM and its mimics. The most common mimics are mesenteric edema or hemorrhage, inflammatory conditions such as pancreatitis, IBD, anything that essentially can cause inflammation of the GI tract uh, as well. And probably the most challenging to distinguish is uh, mesenteric neoplasia. And the common ones here are lymphoma, metastatic uh, carcinoid tumor, desmo tumors, as well as mesenteric carcinomatosis. So basically, the, you know, the bottom line here is if there's clinical suspicion, high clinical suspicion of malignancy affecting the mesentery, or the workup is equivocal, a biopsy should be pursued for definitive diagnosis. With respect to management, uh, as alluded to earlier, there's no current guidelines with respect to management of this condition. And a lot of uh, what we do from the clinical setting is based on uh, some retrospective studies as well as expert opinion. Asymptomatic patients can be observed without treatment as the uh, treatment here may not outweigh the risks of the medication uh, compared to its benefits. With respect to patients that are more symptomatic or have complications of SM, the first line pharmacotherapy currently utilized is tamoxifen as well as a prednisone taper. Uh, if the patient is uh, has a contraindication to tamoxifen or it's not effective for this patient, other agents uh, are certain immunosuppressants like azathioprine, coltracine, or thalidomide can also be utilized in these situations as well. 
However, the evidence for these medications are scarce and based on predominantly retrospective studies or case series. Uh, there's no re uh, randomized control trials looking at these medications. Overall, the natural history of SM is not well elucidated, uh, but overall, it's thought to SM is thought to be benign in many cases. So our paper not only provides a basis for busy clinicians on how to approach patients with SM, but also highlights what remains unknown and warrants future investigation. For instance, as the majority of our current knowledge on SM is based on smaller case series or retrospective studies, larger studies on SM are warranted for a better overall understanding of this condition. This includes topics such as a better elucidation of the natural history, the prevalence of the mimics of SM, as well as a more more robust evidence of how treatment response should be assessed. We are currently working on such a project that was prompted by this review. Additionally, randomized control trials focusing on the safety and efficacy of medications that are utilized to treat SM are crucial. As alluded to earlier, a majority of the current knowledge of these medications are uh, based on studies that lacked a control group. So essentially, RCTs are warranted. With that, I would like to invite everyone to read our article when published in Mayo Clinic Proceedings in May of 2024. And please do not hesitate to reach out with any questions. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research. All rights are reserved, including those for text and data mining, AI training, and similar technologies.